Instacart Fridays. Yetis, last week we introduced you to our partnership with Instacart. We told you how you can save time by letting an Instacart personal shopper snag your groceries. But groceries is a limiting word. Okay, so Jack, we get home from the hospital with our new baby boy, Maxie, last week. And here's the situation. We've got the diapers ready. It's the first night. But we had the wrong diapers. Disaster. It turns out Nick just discovered there's a size smaller than size one. Yeah, apparently there's a newborn size and you need that on day number one. Nick didn't want to leave little Maxie alone, so he grabbed the Instacart app and had the right diapers delivered an hour later. Yeti's Instacart lets you shop from over a thousand stores, from your go-to wholesale club to your local supermarket to a specialty store. So you can get whatever you need delivered in as fast as an hour. Instacart saved that first day with Max Moment for me and Molly. If you've never tried Instacart, they hooked us up with a special offer. 30 bucks off your first order of $80 or more at instacart.com slash tboy. You'll also get free delivery on your first three orders. Minimum $10 per order for free delivery. Offers valid for a limited time. Additional terms apply. Instacart Fridays. Newborn diapers. This is Nick. This is Jack. It's Friday, the real Friday, July 14th. And today's pod is the best one yet. Yes, it is. Jack, can we talk about how jacked Mark Zuckerberg has gotten, by the way? Are you hearing what they're calling this summer? What are they calling it? What are they calling it, man? They're calling it Hot Zuck Summer. (laughs) It's like he zucked Brad Pitt's body, man. (laughs) I know. I think he copied and pasted it somehow. What's he eating these days? Twitter. He's eating Twitter. First story, what do we got on the show, Jack? For our first story. The most trending food of the summer is the hot dog. Sales are smoking. Because Yeti's the hot dog is really a tech platform. For our second story, the strike in Hollywood just got a whole lot bigger. Yeti's the Hollywood strike is now seven studios versus 170 thousand people. And our third and final story, Delta's earnings report, confirms our hypothesis from earlier in the week. That is the Amalfi Coast is beating Epcot. Mykonos is beating the Magic Kingdom. And it is a small world after all. (laughs) The south of France (laughs) is beating South Dakota. (laughs) But Yetis, before we hit that wonderful mix. (laughs) This is a mix of stories to go into a weekend with, Jack. Drones. Drones aren't that novel anymore. By this point, everyone has seen a drone. Drones are a dime a dozen these days. Drones used to be just for military operations. But now we're doing drones for skiing videos. And at most weddings, you're seeing a drone taking pictures up high. And you got drones doing real estate photos for websites. But the latest use of drones is the wildest use of drones by far. And what is that, Jack? Shark patrol. Shark patrol. Yet these drones are the new lifeguards. Get this. Kind of a scary fact. Across New York State's beaches, Shark bites are up this year. All right, we jumped into the data. Until last year, there were only 20 shark bites ever in New York State. But what are we looking at now, Jack? Last year, there were eight shark bites. And last week alone, five people were bitten by sharks just on Long Island. Forget about it. Yeah, these warmer waters, they're drawing the apex predator closer to shore. So Long Island's beaches are like a deli for sharks right now. Uh, your body is basically shark baloney. Gabagool. So the New York Parks Department is stepping up big time. The New York Parks Department just unveiled a shark finding drone force. You know the NYPD, right? This is the NYSD. (laughs) Yeah, we got ourselves the New York shark drones. (laughs) New York shark drones. 42 drones will spot sharks from the air and send messages down to the lifeguards for an orderly evacuation. They're monitoring sharks off of Montauk. They're finding sharks off Fire Island. And the coolest thing in the Hamptons this summer, what is it, Jack? It's not Sunrise Soul Cycle. And it's not Michael Rubin's white party. It's a shark fighting fleet of freaking drones. Behold the NYSD. (laughs) The NYSD. The New York Shark Drones. To protect and to serve and to bite. Jack, let's hit our three stories. 15 years before this song, two boys from the Northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea to cause a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T-Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, cause we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. Start the show. For our first story, the newest fine dining food trend is not what you think. It's the hot dog. The hot dog. The hot dog. Hot dogs are hot right now because they're a financially perfect food. Okay, but first, Jack, the hot dog. 
Is the hot dog a sandwich? Let's get this out of the way. I think a hot dog is its own category. Of Interesting. Okay, but that which is between two pieces of bread is not a sandwich, is it not? I don't speak old English. It's not me. It's Shakespeare. But Yetis, the Wall Street Journal, they say the hot dog has become the it food of summer 2023. And the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council confirms it. There is a sales surge going on with these sausages from the beaches in Malibu to the bar over at Nobu. Hot dog. Their sales are hot right now. And the best source for numbers is Nathan's, the classic Coney Island hot dog company. It's actually a publicly traded company that issues data. Jack and I jumped in T-Boy style. Jack, what's going on with the hot dog sales over at Nathan's Hot Dogs? They jumped 11% last quarter. Not too shabby. But Yetis, Jack and I, we should sprinkle on more context here. The key is that it's not grocery store hot dogs that you're tossing on the grill. We're talking about restaurant hot dog sales. Hot dogs are all over fine dining menus right now. They've been promoted from the backyard to the bistro. Like, we're not talking Papaya King hot dogs. We're talking like Gramercy Tavern hot dogs, Michelin starred puppies. That's right. A promotion from the paper plate to the maitre d'. Not the stuff of your buddy Timmy's barbecue. For example, over in Los Angeles, there is a Pakistani hot dog with chickpea masala that's going to cost you like 25 bucks. In New York, they're charging 29 bucks for a hot dog with kimchi and edible flowers decorating the top. At a certain point, the hot dog's going to have enough money to eat you. These are some fancy frankfurters we're talking about. But Yetis, here's what Jack and I found fascinating about this story. It's kind of ironic, but the wiener is a profit puppy. The hot dog costs less than a burger, but restaurants are pricing it like it's a steak. It has something to do with this funny combination of nostalgia, because like you had hot dogs in your childhood, but novelty, because you never see them at restaurants. Yeah, we're willing to pay premium for a hot dog at a restaurant. And if you're a restaurant owner, you're loving the economics of these hot dogs. Because that high-priced hot dog it costs less than just about any other meat for the restaurant to prepare. And we don't want to offend anyone here, do we, Jack? We do not want to offend anyone here. Sorry, but it's true. It's a bottom tier cut of meat. Add it up, Yeti's high price, low cost. That is a fat profit margin for the low margin restaurant industry. Hot dogs have always been a seasonal favorite in the summertime. July happens to be the biggest month for hot dog sales. But hot dogs more and more are finding a permanent place on the menu of nice restaurants. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies who are everyone eating hot dogs? Never underestimate the power of a platform. All right, Yeti's, here's what Jack and I are thinking. A key reason hot dogs are taken off it's the same reason that tech companies did. There's an analogy here between media and tech and hot dogs. Here's what we're thinking. The hamburger. The hamburger is like traditional media. Its content is limited. It's got meat and toppings, but they're both hidden from sight by the bun. There's not much flexibility when it comes to the hamburger as a form of content. But the hot dog... It's a foundation for infinite content. Yeah, the hot dog is like a tech platform. You can put anything on a hot dog and everyone's going to see it. You can put a shaved beef on a hot dog bun. Have no bun at all. You can wrap that doggy in a tortilla. The Wall Street Journal put it nicely. The hot dog is a vehicle for endless interpretation in a way that a burger never can be. Like the iPhone, a hot dog is truly a platform. You can build just about anything on a hot dog. For our second story, Hollywood just stopped. The actors are joining the writers and are going on strike today. No new television shows or new movies are going to get made in Hollywood until a deal gets reached. Yeah, he's today, day number one of the actors' strike. Which means both actors and writers, like the entire creative part of a movie and production, is on strike. And they're striking over pay and they're striking over artificial intelligence. The pay part's obvious. The AI part, here it is. They want the studios to commit to not replace actors with AI-generated versions of actors. Like they, they, like they want to have DiCaprio, not AI Caprio. Seems like a fair request. We'd prefer the actual Caprio. But this is an epic matchup worthy of a Hollywood movie. Yes, it is, Jack. But the Hollywood movie can't happen because everyone's on strike. Great point, Jack. Hollywood shut down as of today. Now, Yetis will jump into the details here. On the one side of the table, you got the seven big production companies. First, you got the old school studios like Disney, Universal, Sony, and Paramount. And then you got the new tech giants like Netflix, Amazon, and Apple. On the other side of the table, you have 170,000 actors and writers. Yeah, you got the writers who write the scripts and the actors who actually read those scripts. And last night, there was a dramatic moment, Oh, actually. this was big. This you couldn't have scripted, Jack. The cast of Oppenheimer 
which I'm very excited to watch next weekend. The cast walked out. They walked right off the red carpet of the UK premiere of that movie in solidarity with the other actors. It actually felt like we were watching a Spielberg movie when we saw that happen. So the strike is on. But we have to tell you about the wild headline we saw two days ago about this strike. Because one side of this debate is willing to make the other one starve. Literally. According to Deadline, studio executives are going to break the writers. Okay, here's the studio strategy. They're just going to wait it out until the writers go broke. They have a lot of money and they know that the writers don't have as much money. So when the holiday season is approaching... They know the writers are going to be short on cash and desperately crawl back to the table to negotiate. Because Yetis, remember, the actors just went on strike yesterday, but the writers have been on strike for 71 days. And the writers aren't household names either. 71 days without pay. So the studios plan to starve them out. Exactly. In fact, what did one studio executive say, Jack? Because this was wild. They called this a cruel but necessary evil. Which is kind of like admitting you're willing to do evil. It does sound both cruel and evil. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for all our buddies over in Hollywood? We've seen this movie before. New tech requires new rules. Yeah, he's the last time the actors went on strike was 1980. Back then, they were scared of this new thing called the movie rental. Yeah, writers and actors were worried that they wouldn't get a cut of money made from movie rentals, of money made at Blockbuster. Yeah, they were actually scared of the Blockbuster situation. This time, the new contentious technology where money is being fought over is streaming. Streaming, because right now, actors and writers get paid once, and any money the movie makes on streaming just goes to the studios. So actors and writers want a piece of that streaming upside. They want a piece of what's called the residuals. So in a way, we've seen this Hollywood strike before. It's like a rerun of what happened in 1980. New viewing tech requires new rules for who gets paid what. And now, a word from our sponsor, Mudwater. Mudwater is a coffee alternative made with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. It leans on the mushrooms hard, nature's X-factor organism, to deliver you energy. Jack, what do I got to do to get a mayataki over here? <laughs> you get the morning boost you need without the caffeine high of coffee. And Jack, can we talk about the temperature lately? It's been hot. It's been record-breaking <laughs> heat, so Jack and I have made a seasonal switcheroo to our Mudwater recipe. Yeah, iced Mudwater. It's a thing. It makes Mudwater with hot water just like you usually do. But then you pour it over a tall glass of ice. I like to mix in whole milk and a splash of maple syrup too. Throw in a little cotton candy, <laughs> why don't you, Jack? <laughs> Yeti's Mud Water, it is so much more than a hot beverage. If you're ready to try out a coffee alternative, give Mud Water a shot. Go to mudwater.com slash T-Boy to support the show and use code T-Boy for 15% off. That's M-U-D-W-T-R dot com slash T-B-O-Y and use code T-Boy for 15% off your order. Rocket money. Yetis, you ever notice that Netflix is treating us like a frog in a pot of boiling water? Netflix was $8 a month when it started. I remember that. Then it became $12. Now it's $15.49. You know what? It's pretty challenging to keep track of all these things we keep paying for, especially when the prices change. So, like the frog, we get burned. And that is why Jack and I both use Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It also monitors your spending and helps lower your bills all in one place. We've been premium members for over a month. Jack, mine just reminded me that I got this smoothie subscription. It's due in four days, so I skipped it because I'm away for the weekend. Boom. You saved money and you avoided food from getting wasted. And over three million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to 720 bucks a year. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions. And manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash tboy. That's rocketmoney.com slash tboy. Rocketmoney.com slash tboy. For our third and final story before the weekend, Delta just reported record revenues and record profits. Delta. Wondering why? It's international travel. Americans are stamping their passports this year. Stamping those passports. Yetis, Delta, they just kicked off the second quarter earnings season and they did it with an upgrade. How's your portfolio, Greg? <laughs> I'd say strong to quite strong, Jack. <laughs> Yetis, Delta's profits rose by 73% to an all-time record last quarter. Jack, you want to whip up another number for us over there? The stock is up nearly 50% so far in 2023. Yetis, we all knew that this was the summer of travel because you're probably stuck somewhere right now, but we did not know what kind of travel it was. But Delta's earnings report 
is a treasure trove of information about how we are traveling this summer. Jack, can you sit down, stand up, and take us over to Terminal 4 over there? Delta's revenues for domestic flights increased by 8% last quarter. Congratulations, Florida. But revenue for transatlantic flights jumped by 65%. Congratulazioni, Florence. Get this, Nick. Revenue for trans-Pacific flights? Talk to me, Jack. What do we got? It jumped by 175% last quarter. Congratulations, Fukushima. CEO Ed Bastian summed it up best with this quote. Anywhere you go in Europe these days, you're seeing an awful lot of Americans. There's an epidemic of Americans in the French Riviera right now. Can someone put butter on my olive oil on my pasta? Ed Bastian went on to say, we haven't been able to get there in like four years, so there's a lot of pent up a man to travel abroad, and that demand's going to stay for some time. Jack, can we say it's a little less St. Louis, a little more St. Bart's? A little less Des Moines, a little more Deutschland. Jack, Forget New York. We're doing old York. <laughs> so what's the takeaway for our buddies in the travel industry? Have a hypothesis. Yetis, Jack and I, we had a hypothesis about international travel. And you know what? It was right. This week, we noticed that Disney World was empty, that Cape Cod has a bunch of vacancy, and that national parks had lower attendance than previous years. So Jack and I built up a hypothesis that Americans were traveling abroad instead of domestic. We said it earlier this week, 2023 is the year Americans stamped their passports. Boom, later this week, Delta's data just proved it. Their new news confirms that hypothesis. The scientific experiment is complete. And the financial experiment <laughs> would have been investing in that trend, wouldn't it, Jack? Yeah, we could have made a well-informed bet and bet on stocks that would have benefited from international travel. And honestly, Jack, we really should have done that. Why didn't we do that? Yeah, we could have put money on Delta. Why didn't we do that? Still not sure why we didn't do that, man. We'll save that for next time. In the meantime, it is gratifying to have a hypothesis, especially when the data clearly confirms it. Or refutes it. <laughs> Jack, can you whip up the takeaways for the real Friday? Hot dogs are the it food of summer 2023. Like a tech platform, you can build just about anything. You can scale just about anything off of a hot dog. For our second story, actors and writers are both on strike now. Nothing new is going to happen in Hollywood. Yeti's new technology requires new rules for who gets paid what. And our third and final story is Delta. Their second quarter earnings show Americans are traveling, especially abroad. So Jack, we had a hypothesis and we probably should have invested in it. Yeah, we should have. Yeah, we should have done that. <laughs> we made a nice return. It would have been pretty fun. These next two stories weren't in the pod but we think you need to know today. First, the FDA just approved the first ever over-the-counter birth control pill. The U.S. joins 100 countries that will allow the sale of the pill without a doctor's prescription. And finally, the World Health Organization says that aspartame, which you can find in a Diet Coke and a lot of other sodas, can cause cancer. But if you're drinking normal amounts of soda, you should be fine. Now, time for the best fact yet, but this one is actually a correction that uh, Jack and I got to make about the pie. Yeah, I'm opening up an envelope here. It's from Waystar Royco. It's a cease and desist. Interesting. Let's go on. Because yesterday we said that Cousin Greg got zero Emmy nominations. And we have got to apologize to the entire Roy family on this one. Cousin Greg got nominated for an Emmy. Not too shabby. In fact, just about every cast member on Succession, including Jerry, got an Emmy nomination. Even if you got wasabi in your eye, you got an Emmy nomination if you worked on Succession. Is that LaCroix? Don't pour LaCroix. Cousin Greg, we apologize. Yetis, you looked fantastic all week, especially Professor Silvera's business class over at the University of Panama City. And why is that, Jack? We publish a pop biz pop quiz. Five questions on this week's pod. We publish it every week. And Professor Silvera's class takes our quiz every single week. And you can too. Go to go.tboypod.com. Go.tboypod.com to play our weekly pop biz pop quiz. And Jack and I will see you Monday. Can't wait. This weekend, celebrate some wins. And before we go, a congratulations to all 
of our French Yetis out there, enjoy your Bastille Day. And happy Schnapptal birthday to Oran Aronson, who's turning 55. Five, five, that is one heck of a Schnapptal. And happy birthday and happy anniversary to Stephen Cavanese in Syracuse, New York. And Henry Parco is turning three with the pool party down in Phoenix. Happy 26th birthday to Joseph Malassa in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And Anika Galani is turning 12 over in Waldwick, New Jersey. Happy birthday to Renee Bueno in Glendale, Arizona. And Amanda Gamino, enjoy that birthday down in Dallas. And happy birthday to Vitaly Pachikin, the master of Microsoft over in San Jose. And Umesh Manetti is celebrating that birthday on a very nice lawn over in Pennsylvania. Congratulations to Megan Rupnik, who's finishing three weeks of her waitressing gig. And Brooks and Bevan Young have a new baby girl born on June 27th over in Boston, just outside Boston. And congratulations to Jason Smithson and Chloe Frederick getting married after 1,356 days of dating. But who's counting? But who's counting? Chloe definitely is counting. <laughs> <laughs> This is Jack. I own stock of Amazon, Disney, and Netflix, and Nick and I both own stock of Apple. 